Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of Full Press Radio. This is December the 14th, 2020. With you today is myself, Carl, and Swedish Nick. Hola. Is that hello? Yeah, I'm gonna... You know what? Never mind. I'm not gonna commit to doing this whole episode in Swedish. <laughs> This is going to be a difficult, because it'll be, every sentence would be, um, hit me in English now. Well, it'll just take twice as long. It'll That's be, okay. What else do we have to do, Carl? <laughs> you know what? Here's what we'll do. We'll do the entire episode in English, but we'll, we'll cut it in half. So we'll do half, like 30 minutes in English. And then the second half will be you playing both of our parts in Swedish. That sounds like fascinating podcasting. <laughs> it's it's a new thing we're trying. Uh, we're going to fly, sh- and we're not going to release them separately. It's going to be one file. Yes. Good. And so the Swedes have to skip to the second half. Um, who knows? Maybe next week we'll do it Swedish first. M- maybe. I mean, if we get strong feedback from the Swedes, do we have a lot of Swedish people who listen to this podcast? Uh, we ha- Yeah, we have a non-zero amount of Swedish listeners, so... I mean, I'd say non-zero is the right amount to start doing this. Well, what, I mean, what, I saw Japan. We got some new listeners in Japan this week. Uh, so next week, you've got one week, one week's warning to learn Japanese. So Welcome, welcome. Well, I don't need a week, Carl. If you give me 30 seconds, I'm going to say, oh, no. <laughs> it shows it up in their writing. In, in kanji? Well. Oh, I think it says, I think it's yokoso. means okay. welcome. So yokoso. Well, thank you, Nick. Um, we will spare you our, I mean, I'll spare you me trying to speak other languages. Uh, Nick can be our linguistics expert on the show. But the reason that Nick, you are speaking in Swedish today is because we have some interesting news that's come out of Sweden today. Yeah, I was uh, already on the translate page set to Swedish, trying to decipher it. Well, do you want to let us know what is, what is the Swedish news of the day? It, oh, now it's all backwards, Carl. It's showing me the writing in Japanese. <laughs> and I, I assume that hockey story does not have much uh, that you can help you there. So while Nick figures out how to do this. I've got it. I've got okay. it. Okay. Big story out of the Allsvenskan in Hockey League in Sweden tonight, I guess. Today, there are allegations that members of a team, Bjork Loven, fixed a loss tonight. Yeah. So they, they threw the game. They threw it. That's the big talk. Uh, apparently just unbelievable uh, result there. They ended up losing the game eight to four. And but they were up three, nothing after the first period. Yeah, they were up three, nothing. Um, and so it actually came out from the team CEO, like the top of the top came out and said, uh, in the aftermath of the loss, it has been speculated that players have been involved in match fixing and deliberately acted a way that benefited the opposing team. So we don't know much more other than this. They were up three nothing after the first, and then gave up seven unanswered goals. However, here's the thing: there was significant gambling done on this game. And this is coming from uh, Chris Johnson, adding on to this as well. So much money, he says, so much money was bet on Mora that the odds changed in unusual games and the game was eventually removed from many betting sites. That is big. So when you're giving up seven goals, it's like, I mean, it's like no one's watching Ottawa Senators game. Because that, I mean, giving up seven unanswered goals is not unheard of. (laughs) But that's crazy. What else? I mean, outside of gambling, is there any reason you can think of that a team would cheat to make their team lose? I mean, to throw a game to lose? I don't know. In the in the context of the NHL, you've you've locked in your playoff spot and you don't want to play the best seed. Wait. So you wanna... That doesn't work, does it? I would say, let's say... Let's say you are playing a team and that's going to impact your standings, right? Sure. You're, you you lose a game to them, they move up the standings, and you'd rather whatever, however that changes things, you'd rather play that other team. 
But only if your playoff spots locked in already. Yeah. So in that sense, right. I would say, I guess let's quickly touch this cheating intentionally losing for gambling reasons. Unacceptable, right? Yes. Okay. Intentionally cheating for those reasons, right. To, to benefit yourself in the end, to get you that playoff matchup you want. You okay with that? No, I don't want teams. I don't know. I would never want to throw a game as a member of a team. What about this? It's the last game of the season. Two teams are tied for last place. First place lottery odds are up for grabs. The tank off begins. What does it matter, Carl? Even if you get the best odds in the lottery, you're not going to win them. So you're saying they should be going for second best odds. Yeah. <laughs> History tells us your odds are better in that Luxembourg on your side in that position. I guess so. So what would you say then? If, if someone were to want to cheat like that, would you be okay with like <laughs> that game ends up 24-27? No, that's garbage. Come on. So there's never, never any, is there any scenario in your mind where it's acceptable for a team to do that? No, they should always be playing their best and trying to beat the other team. We only what are sports if you're not playing to win? It's, I mean, I get that, right? I Even for fans of a team who really want, like, you know, the season's over and you know that it's going to be there, right? And there's some teams that we... We've seen that in the past where you, you're just, the season's done, you're wanting to lose, but you win that game and it feels a little bit better. You're less embarrassed, some pride's on the line. It feels good. Yeah, 100%. Now, question before we move off for the Swedish thing. First of all, did you see this picture from this article that Chris Johnston subtweeted, quote tweeted? Is this the CEO? I mean, I would assume so. He's like basically the Kyle Dubas of Swedish hockey. It also looks like it could just be a stock image. It could be. It could be uh, Patrick from Schitt's Creek. It very well could be be Patrick from Schitt's Creek. (laughs) Right down to the button up shirt. (laughs) Exactly. I have no, I have, you know what? I've never seen the two of them in the same room. (laughs) That's fantastic. So anyways, interesting here. Uh, more will come out of this. And I assume, I mean, suspensions, if true, suspensions absolutely will be coming. Yeah, I'm really curious if it is true to see who instigated it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like a lot of the players were in on it. It was not just one. I know there was, if you look at the box score, uh, there was some very intentional penalties happening. So uh, I've seen some speculation as well that the officials might have been in on it. And if that's the case, then it goes deep. Ooh, big story. This could be a Hollywood move, movie potential kind of story. Yeah, we could have. And I mean, baseball banned Pete Rose for betting on the game, and he wasn't even in it. So these guys might be might be banned for life. Yeah, Which, but then again, baseball turned around and gave a championship to the Houston Astros, so. Yeah, they did. Sometimes cheating's okay, as long as it makes the league a bunch of money. That's According the rule, to right? the that's MLB. The, that's the rule. <laughs> money talks. Cheating's okay, as long as it ends in with three S's that have bars through them vertically. Exactly. Well, we've got, uh, we're going to talk about some more of those S's with bars through them vertically. Uh this week, we're going to talk. The NHL return to play is nearing, apparently, less than a month away from actual NHL games. We'll talk about that this week. We're going to talk about the World Junior Hockey Championships, which are also apparently still happening. We'll, we'll touch on that. We've got a festive top 10 coming for you, and we'll see where the flashback takes us. Let's start with the news of the NHL's return to play We talked last week, January 15th was the potential date. It is updated. January 13th is the current date. Again, nothing official yet, but the league is currently hammering out details on realignment. They're hammering out details on COVID protocol and all those things still being negotiated with the players, but January 13th will be the day. Not official, but it certainly feels more real now, doesn't it? 
based on some weird. of the reports coming out? Absolutely. I mean, we've got team after team after team, you know, players are flying back. We've seen that players from Europe uh, who were training separately or playing with teams are making their way back to North America for this season. Where they're starting their informal training. Right. Uh, and also they're at their team's training facilities. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not allowed to be in there. You're not allowed to have what, especially our Canadian teams, you know, you're, you're not allowed to have them open, but Hey, if someone accidentally leaves the lights on and there's ice in there might as well. Whoops. And the parking gates open. <laughs> I mean, we got to get that security guard. Should we go train on the ice? Sure. <laughs> Why not, right? That would that would be funny. Just all like of a Alex we... Alex Ovechkin opens the door. <laughs> there's you and I stumbling around the ice. Yeah, I mean it's been a while since I skated. It would look terrible. To get oh started. man, it's been a year. A year. They've just started opening outdoor rinks in my neighborhood like last week. I cannot wait to get out there. Same. We uh, we have one literally across the street from our house that opened up. Monday. So going to make my way out there, but also now, okay. Tell me how terrible of an idea this is. My wife wants to get some pictures taken, you know, yeah. so that, cause we, it's been over 10 years since we had professional pictures taken. She thought, you know, what would be nice. We could go skating for them. Yes. Which sounds great to me. However, she also wants to recreate a wedding picture in which I was holding her up. How hard am, how long will I be concussed for if I try to hold my wife up on skates? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Just do it. Do it on the side of the rink, but like position the camera in a way that it makes it look like you're on the ice. Don't do it. Okay. So not like I'll be completely we're, just we're still wearing shoes is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. So it's funny you say that because our, the engagement pictures that me and my wife did, we rented out the ice and we did them at an arena and we did not go onto skates. We brought them with us. But when we got there, we were like, nah, it's not a good idea to do this on skates. So I can tell you what to prepare for one. You're going to fall. Whether you're on skates or not, you're going to fall. So your butt might get a little hurt Two, You're going to get wet. I left that place. It looked like I peed and pooed myself. <laughs> Which which is exactly what the look you want in engagement pictures. I'm sure I'm sure they turned out amazing. It was terrible because I didn't wear like dark pants. I wore these like light gray pants. It was an awful idea. Okay, is that are those the only tips I need? You should. Those are the only tips you need. Wear dark pants for sure. Wear dark pants. Okay, dark pants, uh, and prepare maybe like, and be prepared to fall, which is fine. That's me playing. That's me on skates, anyways. I mean, bring a helmet. I mean, I'm not going to wear a helmet. <laughs> like I'll bring it maybe, but I'm not, nothing screams nice looking pictures like me wearing a hockey helmet. You need to wear a helmet, no visor or mask, just the helmet, elbow pads. Mm -hmm. Cause when you go down, you don't want to hit those funny bones nope. and probably shin pads. Just cause like, if you're doing a shot where she's in front of you and you're behind and she falls forward, boom, skate to the shin. You know, just, you don't, just gear up, put your equipment on. Just, you know what? I'll bring the stick. We'll bring a puck and we'll just, play. <laughs> we'll invite some people out. And all of a sudden we got a game going. There you go. Perfect. Well, thanks for the tips, Nick. Where no were we? All oh, right. This new season. Return so, to play January 13th, January 13th. Uh, last week we discussed the possibility that money would be the determining factor in whether or not this season happened. Turns out the NHL, suddenly okay with every team losing $150 million. I mean, if they're going to make this happen, they got to be okay with losing some money. It's a shortened season. They have to play in front in empty arenas. Then who knows what the cost is just to turn the lights on to some of those places. They've just been leaving them on for us to go play in. So <laughs> it can't be that much, right? Can't be that much. They have so to be okay with it if they want to have a season. And they have to have a season. They can't they just sit by. Yeah. Um, we, but 
there was a report that came out that said, and this is one of the things that the NHL is looking at. I've seen uh, some news today about potential changes to TV deals moving forward, but also they're exploring the idea, and even for this year, but the idea of having ads on helmets. How do you feel about this season being the one where ads enter the equipment realm in the NHL? I mean, it's going to happen sooner or later, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't love it personally. I don't like the way it looks. I understand why they have to do it. Yeah. And in the idea, I mean, we've, we, the NBA's moved to that area recently. Right. And I don't, most of the time I don't fully notice it. Right. Unless it's like a weird ad. I'm like, why are the Clippers sponsored by Bumble? (laughs) Right. But outside of that, I mean, like the wraps are sponsored by Scotia Bank. No, Sun Life. I think Sun Life. Yeah, Sun Life. Again, they're, they're fine. They're small. They typically work well with the logos and the jerseys, the coloring that they use. So I'm fine with it. There are ways to do it that make them non-intrusive. Yeah. So it like they're gonna blend in with the. By the way. When, when the players play with jerseys and there's the Nike swoosh on the bottom of it or the Adidas logo at the front neck like, or the back neck or whatever, that's basically an ad. Absolutely, it's an ad. You know, you got yeah. the Nike swoosh on the skates. I don't know if they do that anymore, but remember those. Uh, that's an ad. You've got, you know, Eagle or whatever you're wearing for gloves on there. Ads, right? We're, apparently, we're only okay with ads for hockey equipment. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. What I don't like is when they, cause like the helmets are a weird shape and they have like weird indentations in them. And when they just slap a sticker over it, it just looks, it looks like something that like I would do at home. Yeah, I agree. So why do I mean, there is a lot of space in NHL equipment to let this work properly and well, right? They were as much equipment, if not more than an NFL team, right? Mm -hmm. Like team regulated things, right? You've got your full Jersey, you've got your socks, you've got gloves, you've got all those pieces that go together. There is room in there to make space for ads. Where would be the place you would most want to see them? Either the pants or the Jersey, just put it on the Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. The jersey seems easiest. And probably least intrusive. Yeah. The least I mean, but and and also gonna get you the most time, right? Like the jersey is always shown. Whereas like you put it on the pants. If we're not looking at that angle, we're not gonna see it. I I mean just like pictures, right? We don't always see the pants in the pictures. Yeah, it's not a lot of close ups of the pants. No. So I I mean, put them on the jersey make some more money. I'm fine with it. And you know that it's, if it comes in this year, it's not going anywhere. It's there to stay. Oh yeah, for sure. hundred percent. And it just makes sense from Like we talked about the financial aspect already. Try to bring in as much money as you can this year, whatever, whatever it takes. Um, We also have some divisions. They're realigning the divisions. We talked about that. The unofficial realignment is out. We have the Canadian teams in a division. So Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Ottawa, Toronto, and Montreal. I'm excited for that division. I really love this idea. I'm excited to watch this division. Because we saw last year, Calgary, Winnipeg in the playoffs, tightly contested, good teams, teams that probably will be similarly, you know, similar styles this year. I'm excited for them to be in the same division. I'm excited, you know, to have some of those other rivalries that don't exist right now be able to grow this year. I I totally agree. It's going to be fun. Give me your, let's do quick and dirty division rankings as we go through this. Okay. Who's, who do you think will be one and two in this division? And who do you think will be dead last in the Canada division? I think we'll have Toronto first Edmonton two. And then dead last, Ottawa and Vancouver. Really? Montreal. Okay. 
Winnipeg wasn't even in your consideration set for they were. the last? They were, yeah, they were. Oh, mostly, how far they fallen? Mostly the reason that I switched Vancouver because I was like, well, they lost Markstrom, but I'd forgotten that they also got Holtby. So I, that's why I bumped them back up. I was going to say Toronto and Vancouver up there. I, with with me remembering that they have a goaltender, I would still put them at the top because they were there. For me, it was Edmonton, Vancouver, and then I was like, wait, they lost Markstrom. I had a whole thing in my head. Anyways. No, it was uh, – I love that you're explaining it. It's very fun to go along that journey with you. <laughs> Which leaves Calgary, Winnipeg, slash Edmonton as the middle middle teams. So you're Edmund, or Ottawa, Montreal at the bottom for you? Yeah. Yeah. Ottawa dead last and then Montreal. Yeah. All right. The rumored West Coast. Oh, let's do let's do this like Metro division. It's essentially the Metro division. This is the one again, that's mostly solidified. I haven't seen any talk of this one changing. Boston, Buffalo, New Jersey, the Islanders, Rangers, Flyers, Pittsburgh, and Washington. That is a tough division. That's gonna be a very tough division. And for me, the big wild card in this is Buffalo. Are they going to be able to play well beyond 10 games into the season? I mean, they only have to play well for 56 games. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. 56 games, pretty much a lock. Right, yeah, which makes sense. So Buffalo, add Taylor Hall. I mean, they're still not top two. No, if we're talking top two, it's not them. Definitely not them. Um, but I don't think they're dead last either. Really? Cause that, I mean, so who's dead last in this for you? New Jersey? Yeah. I think I agree. Yeah. It's gotta be New Jersey. I think New Jersey's last. I would probably still put Buffalo bottom two though. I'm putting them bottom two. I'm not that high in Philadelphia anymore. Um, I would like to know why. And maybe not as bottom two. But yeah, then who else do you put bottom two? It would have to be, it would have to be Buffalo. None of these, like all these other teams are better than them. I would like you to explain your Philadelphia Flyers dislike without you disparaging the name of Carter Hart. Fair, they have Carter Hart. They just disappointed me in the, in the bubble series. Yeah. Oh, I, I was so with you. I, w- I read a lot for some reason I read a lot about this specific team, this random specific team. And I was very excited and I thought that they could go all the way. And then they just blew it. And I was like, forget this team. They're, they're going to the basement of my heart. <laughs> so there you go. they're the bottom two of your heart. For the sure. bottom two of my heart. Yeah. Not, um, I guess not of my brain, yeah. probably New Jersey and Buffalo. Okay. Top two. Boston and oh man, I don't know, Washington. I was gonna say there's a real log jam there behind them, right? Because yeah. Washington, now they're gonna have, you know, no Holpe. They're mo- they've moved on from him, so they're gonna have Samsonov in net. The Rangers also moved on from their long term goalie, Lafiniere in there. Uh the Islanders continue to do their thing. Pittsburgh also moved on from their goalie. This is the division of teams moving on. And for some reason, Boston Bruin fans continue to want them to move on from two. <laughs> oh, the irony. I love it. But Boston's still the best team in this division. Boston still tops at this division. Uh, I would say if I had to pick, and that is what we're doing, I would probably put, I mean, without thinking too much through it, I want, I want to say my heart says the Rangers but my head says not yet. Can't be the right. Not yet. I agree. I'm going, I'm going to go Pittsburgh. Yeah. Go Pittsburgh. Okay. They find a way. All right. I mean, no. Pittsburgh, Washington is basically a coin toss. That's yeah. All right. These next two divisions have some things that still need to be ironed out. The Minnesota wild apparently are not entirely content with where they are in this between travel and competition. The league is still trying to iron out where they're going to end up. But let's assume that with what the most rumored scenario is, the Carolina Columbus, Detroit, Chicago, Florida, Minnesota, Nashville, Tampa division. Okay. First of all, how could Minnesota be unhappy with this based on what's going on in the other West Coast division? Well, I think that's part of the problem is that they're wanting 
they're wanting less travel, but the league is wanting this division to be less of a tire fire. <laughs> like they're, they're in a good spot in this division. They're not in the best spot, but I mean, they're in a good spot. I mean, both of these two, like, I guess what central and West divisions have very clear lines between playoff and not playoff teams. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I, I love this division because it's got the Florida teams in it. And every time we talk about East coast teams, they always just move Florida somewhere into the middle of the country. <laughs> I, at least, at least now they have Carolina in that division, right? That's like, true. They're not in the same division as Ottawa, which never really made sense. That is true. Um, yeah. Like you said, this division has much clearer lines between playoff and not playoff teams. To me, it's pretty clear who the best two teams are. Um, It's pretty clear who the worst team is. And then we can talk about who the second worst team is. So I'm just going to say mine and assume that you're on the same page. Tampa, Carolina are the top two. Oh, we're wrong already. It's not Nashville. Oh, no, sorry. I was thinking upside down. I had to try at the top. Let me flip my rankings back right side up. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Tampa and Carolina. It's, again, we're talking brain, not heart, Nick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Tampa, Carolina, Detroit at the bottom. Yes. And to pair with them, I think if I'm, if I'm thinking, you know, a little hockey standing sommelier, what pairs well with the Detroit Red Wings at the bottom? I think... Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think a little Florida. I think a little, you've got, uh, you know, you spend the summer in Michigan and the winter in Florida. I think that pairs nicely together. I'm going with the Panthers. I think you might be right. Uh, I get, all the other teams are better. Like I would put all the other teams above Florida in a one-on-one match. Again, like you look at what they did last off season, right? They brought in Bobrovsky. They had Quenville. Like this team should have been better. It very well could. And I could, without being put on the spot, move the Panthers up. I also think, you know, the Columbus, a very well coached team. Yeah. Chicago taking steps to improve, right? They're, they're doing some things better than they should be better than they should be. Nashville's going to take a step back this year. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. All right. Last division, the West Coast, Anaheim, Arizona, Colorado, Dallas, Los Angeles, San Jose, St. Louis, and Vegas. This one, even more so, tops and bottoms. Yeah. This is going to be a tough, tough season for teams like Anaheim, Arizona, and Los Angeles. And no clear... There is not a clear top two to me even in this division. No, no. Honestly, the top two and the top and the bottom two are kind of coin tosses just with completely separate groups of teams. Yeah. It's a bottom four and a top four. I would think Vegas is my pick to win this division. I know, but we all know that you always underestimate your own team so that you're not disappointed when they don't end up where you want them to end up. But I think Colorado could end up at the top of this division. I would put them second, but like it's hard. I mean, Dallas just went to the Stanley cup finals and all of a sudden we're putting them third at best. It's wild. That's the, it's, and I, it, yeah. It's, and St. Louis too. Like St. Louis is still a very good team. They just won the cup two years ago. Although yeah. they lost Petrangelo. Yep. They they got worse for sure. I would sure. probably I would probably slot that Vegas, Colorado, Dallas, St. Louis on the bottom end though. I'm probably gonna. Last week we talked about you know, we both agreed Anaheim probably a bottom team. Yeah, for sure. Anaheim and Los Angeles. Yeah, I think so. L. A. It's gonna be. I mean, look, you got the Lakers, you got the Dodgers. You've won championships. NHL hockey is not going to be your sport this year. No, you had your years, <laughs> but you're doing you're doing fine. Los Angeles sports are not going to be suffering because of those two teams. Not absolutely not. Well. not. No. 
All right. Well, there you go. That is what we're looking at for this coming season. Those are going to be your new divisions. We'll be talking about all those things, playoff format, all those things very likely to change. Uh, And as those details come out, there's talk by Wednesday of this week, last week, this news came out the day after we released this week, they're reported reported to be coming out Wednesday. We'll see what actually comes out. Uh, But let's, let's see and wait. Uh, World juniors coming up. Teams are starting to make their way over. And did you see the struggles that it took to get these teams over here? I was going to say parts of teams are starting to come over. (laughs) Some teams, I mean, well, there's entire coach, like Sweden's coaching staff. Uh, If you were to just, do you just want to go to their website and look up in Swedish, all the different people who are missing from this team because their coaching staff has lost multiple members. Teams are losing members because testing positive for COVID, not allowed to travel, not allowed to be part of this team tournament. Wasn't it their like entire bench staff? Yeah. Like all of them. I'm not sure if the head coach was, I think all the assistants and I could be wrong. I could have, I could have missed uh, the head coach, but yeah. These so coaching staffs are coming, coming missing things from a country that infamously did absolutely nothing when COVID hit. Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not, uh, you know what? Maybe not the best plan in the end. Who knew? No. Um, so we've got teams missing people, coaches, players. We also have teams stuck in the middle of nowhere. The IAHF, made a plan to get teams to the bubble in Edmonton. However, apparently they didn't think through just how much equipment it takes to get these players there. Because when they hopped on the plane, there was not enough room for all the equipment and all the players. How like how, how often have they been... How many of these tournaments have they held before? How do you not know how to get all this stuff over there? You got to think, right? Like, let's make sure, let's make this easy. Let's just book enough space. Because here's the other thing. There was, it wasn't even a full plane. They had planned to be able to physically distance within the cabin of the plane. However, once they showed up and tried to fit everything on the plane and realized that wasn't going to be possible, they then had to put some of the stuff in the cabin so that they could make their way out. Unreal. It's insanity. And a very preventable thing. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. I, at, the, at the very least, I get that they're trying to cut costs. I get that they're not going to have ticket sales in a location where, I mean, Canada and the U.S. are where they make their money, right? They hold those tournaments there very often. They make their money off of ticket sales there. Uh, they make a lot of money off of the TV deal, which they're going to get a bunch from this year because they're the only hockey show in town. Yep. Um, but outside of that, you just maybe don't share the plane with teams. Maybe just one plane per team. Can we do that next time? Can we make that happen? Seems like the most logical solution. Maybe they can, they'll arrange that for the way home. Look, I don't, I don't know how to tell them airlines kind of struggling right now i'm sure you could get a pretty good deal on on booking out an entire plane but hey what do i know you know a lot carl don't sell yourself short yeah i I get by all right uh let's head to the time machine oh yeah what do we what's the date today December 14th. Okay, when did we talk about last year? December 14th. In our flashback I love this segment. segment. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. So, oh, interesting. Okay. We've got some, some interesting ones. We've got, all right. Last year, we have number one, Jim Montgomery. Oh, Fire yeah. Stars. Another that coach. Was big news. Big news. Yeah, there was like a lot of coaches were let go in a very short amount of time last year. And for like a variety of reasons. This was one uh, that I'm very grateful. It does sound like he's uh, he's gotten things together and he's on a good track. So glad to hear in the end that Jim Montgomery ended up having some positives for him, him being let go by the stars. Agreed. All right, point number two. 
There's nothing next to it. I don't. Oh no, Corey Crawford. Something about Corey Crawford. What do you think he did? Got hurt. Probably. Was there was there like a will Corey Crawford play this season conversation? Could be. Uh, Ilya Kovalchuk was our best of the week. Oh, interesting. Was he playing for the Habs by then? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so he uh, did well for them. Yeah, and then we have a note that just says DeBoer and Bugner. Were those guys hired at that point in time for their new teams? DeBoer went to Vegas. I'm going to go with yes. Yeah, because then I was going to, my only other thought was Nashville. He went to Vegas. Hines ended up in Nashville. And Bugner went to San Jose. Yeah. That feels early in the season for the Bugner hire. I think it might have been that they took, maybe at that point in time, they took the interim tag off. Mm, could be. I'm not sure. Because who did they fire? Who did the start of the season last year with the Sharks? Do you remember? DeBoer. DeBoer did. Right. So they'd made that swap. Maybe that was the time that DeBoer got fired, Bugner got hired, and then later on, Could be. DeBoer ended up in Vegas. I don't know, but I hope in this episode last year, my jingle ended with something around DeBoer and showing him the door. <laughs> if it didn't, you can, <laughs> good news. You can fix it. You get a chance at redemption. Second chance. Yeah. Um, it, this was so Bugner was announced the same day that they replaced DeBoer. Okay. So, so there you go. And that Mystery was, solved. That was last week. And what team do you think was the second team eliminated in the elimination station last season? Oh, we already had Detroit. I'd say Ottawa. You nailed it. The Ottawa senators were the team eliminated last year and let's play the game. Do you think that they are eliminated sooner this year or later? I'm going to go later. What do you think? I think so. I think there's, I mean, they've made some moves of improvement. They got Matt Murray in net now. It's got to be better than. Yeah. I'm also, Murray. I'm also just thinking that some teams got worse. Oh, right. They kind of maintained some teams got better. Some got worse. Yeah. We've got that entire Pacific division that's not those top four teams that's going to end up at the bottom. Yeah, yeah I exactly. Say Ottawa, I say Ottawa can hang on for a little bit. I think so. Yeah, I've got. They've got some good pieces, especially. I mean, if we're talking two years from now, definitely. Definitely, but this year too. Yeah. All right. Plus, these shortened seasons make bad teams go on crazy. They'll probably make the playoffs. Yeah, some fun with sample size thing, and then it'll be like when Patrick Watt took the avalanche to the playoffs and then won the Jack Adams. Then was terrible the rest of his career. That was this fun. Is, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is why I don't feel happy about my team. Sometimes every even time, when I should. every time Patrick was brought up as a coach, I just think about him breaking the glass over. I don't even remember who it was, but it was like that his was, first uh, NHL game and he pushed the glass over onto him. It was a, uh, he was with the ducks Oh, it wasn't Carlisle? Randy. It wasn't Carlisle. It was, he also coached the, he ended up in Minnesota. Same slip in my mind. I Anyways. don't know. It'll come back to you. It'll come back. I to just, me. I, that image is imprinted on my brain of Patrick Waugh losing it in his first ever NHL coaching game and pushing yeah. the glass over. <laughs> yeah, it was entirely unnecessary, but he set a tone. He was setting a tone. <laughs> he certainly did that. <laughs> I've never like, because not only was that his first game, like that had to be premeditated, right? Like, I would think that like before he was getting himself amped up and he's like, all right, I'm going to go and cause some trouble out there tonight. Yeah. Like I'm going to, I'm going to rile the team up and I'm going to set the tone for how we're going to handle things this season. We're not going to be pushed around. Here's an idea for a top 10, top 10 crazy coach moments. Ooh. All right. That would be on there next week. Next week. All right. I'm writing it down so we don't forget it. Uh, let's take a break right now and be back on the other side with our actual top 10 for this week.
Welcome back, everyone. It is time for our festive summer top 10 list. The summer top 10 list this week is festive because we are going to be talking about top 10 Christmas foods, top 10 foods to be eating over the holidays. Because I mean, especially now that we're all just going to be sitting at home with the people we live with, food is going to take on a, a different role, but an equally, if not more important role than normal. This is the season, right? To do what we do every night. <laughs> but with different food to really spice it up. But with different food. That's right. It's one of the few things that we can do right now to uh, increase our festiveness. Is eating and drinking and being merry in whatever new ways we want to. So, And like making and preparing. That's part of it too. Absolutely. Right. It, that's a big part of what goes into it. Uh, I mean, one of the items on this list I have yet to make this year. And when I do. I'm going to be going hard on it because oh, only one of them. I eat no several of these. I haven't, okay. but one, <laughs> one of these I've made every year already. Uh, and I haven't yet. So, Oh, I can't let's wait get, to hear what that is. Let's do it. So we have pre-made our top 10 list this week. The 10 items have been selected. Anything else that's not on this list is not even worth the milk that Santa dips his cookies into. <laughs> So I guess milk comes in at number 11. <laughs> milk is coming in at an aggressive number 11. Uh, here we go. So in no particular order, AKA the order we thought of them, turkey, sugar cookies, candy canes, gingerbread, fruitcake, mashed potatoes, chocolate oranges, eggnog, nuts and bolts, and ham. Those are our 10 items on this week's festive top 10 list, which is great. Cause I mean, if you are not in the mindset of preparing for what you're going to be eating for the next three, four weeks, as we get into, I mean, lots of us have vacation that we're not allowed to carry over into next year. We're going to be burning that this, this time of the year. I, I know lots of people are doing that. Uh, and you're going to have a, a, maybe a couple extra days off over the holidays anyways. And you're going to want to have your snacks or your meals prepared. So this is, this is our way of getting you started for that. So coming in at number 10 on three, one, two, three, chocolate mashed oranges. Potatoes. Chocolate, mashed potatoes I, at 10? No, it's not mashed potatoes. It's candy canes. Candy canes are coming in at 10. Look, candy canes are a bottom five for sure, but chocolate oranges... Come on, chocolate and orange just don't mix. Absolutely, they mix. The only good thing about these chocolate oranges is the smashing part. It's fun. No, and the eating part. They're oh, delicious. Boy. How many candy canes do you actually eat in a year? Uh, depends how many my mom puts on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's one. I eat one. I'm at at this point in my life. I'm a one candy cane a year. No. Like, oh. I'm multiple because someone always buys those like packs of 12 of them that kind of stick out of the box. Yeah. They're fine. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with peppermint? I, peppermint's fine. I'd much, I mean, the place that I've eaten peppermint is like peppermint bark. You put that in there. That should be on this list instead of candy canes. That's way higher. Up yeah. There. Pe peppermint bark's actually pretty good. So like candy cane is just fine. It's whatever, but I'm not getting excited about a candy cane. I'm not five. It's not exciting for sure. It's like I said, it's bottom five, but it's higher than chocolate oranges. No, no. Candy cane is the least exciting thing here. I, cause like you are not decorating your tree with chocolate oranges. You have like, there are, I still have candy canes from last year that have not been eaten that are just going to be put on the tree. And then I should probably throw them out this year. You know how many chocolate oranges I've eaten in my life? Let me tell you about an eighth of one. And I spat that piece out because it was disgusting. No. Yes. You are wrong. I mean, okay, fine. You're not wrong. That is how many. <laughs> you know. I, I strongly disagree with this, that chocolate and orange don't go together. Chocolate and orange absolutely go together. So you're saying I need to try another chocolate orange. I think you need to try another one. Yeah. Mm. Your, your palate has sophisticated over the years 
and now you you've come around. I mean, I'm open to giving it another try. And for that reason, I won't put it at 10, but I need candy canes to be above chocolate oranges. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> hit, hit me with this then. What is, if it's not oranges, if you're going to give oranges another try, what is the worst pairing that people try to do with chocolate? Um, I feel like we're going to fight about this. Mint. Oh, yeah. Mint and chocolate? I don't like mint and chocolate together. Literally, I have been devouring a pint of mint. It's like peppermint bark ice cream. No, no. I'd rather just, I, I, I can't do the ice cream. The ice cream's even worse than just like, like I like peppermint bark just fine. I'm not going to eat a whole tub of it. And I'm definitely not eating ice cream that's chocolate mint. Okay. Hold, I can't. It's gross. I. This is arguably the most divisive thing that a Detroit Red Wing and Colorado Avalanche fan have experienced in their relationship. I'm going to get, I know I'm going to get a ton of hate for this one and that's okay. I just, I don't like the feeling of it on my tongue. Okay. So <laughs> what, is, what is, what is your favorite chocolate pairing? Uh, what is my favorite chocolate peanut butter? Easy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can like, are you talking, are you just going to take a like normal chocolate bar, like just squares of chocolate and put peanut butter on them? Or are you talking peanut, like a Reese's cup? I have never not done that before. (laughs) (laughs) Like when was the last time you ate peanut butter that wasn't slathered onto a chocolate bar? Oh, we eat peanut butter all the time on toast and stuff. Okay. When was the last time you ate a chocolate bar without peanut butter? Uh, That's a different question. (laughs) Okay. All that Easter chocolate, that milk, that milk chocolate, uh, peanut butter all over that. Do you, oh, I've never thought about just like slather an Easter bunny oh. in <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> it's delicious. You've changed my life, Nick. Thank you. Um, all right. So what are we, what are we putting there then? Ham. I mean, I'm open to that. I did not expect that to, to come up so soon. I I don't know. There's a lot of good things on this list. Okay. I don't know. What to Look, what would you here's, put? here's what, here's what we'll do. Okay. Cause we got to keep this moving. <laughs> we got a Christmas dinner to get to. <laughs> yeah. We're going to put candy canes at number 10. We're going to put chocolate oranges at number nine. Okay. I'm down. Yeah. That smug smile of yours. You are <laughs> down. That's what we call a compromise. Okay, so what are you what are you feeling for number nine then or number eight? Ham, that's way down on the list. <laughs> I thought we were gonna have this whole debate over ham and turkey, but like I agree, ham is way down. So here's the thing. I think ham has more potential than turkey. Far and away, ham has more potential than turkey. The range of possibilities that you can do with ham outweigh what you can do with turkey. But it's the execution that people typically fail at with both of these. Like the amount of people I have experienced a turkey dinner where they have literally taken a thawed turkey, put it in a roasting pan, put some water in the bottom of it and shoved it in the oven. No, also some pepper. It has been seasoned solely with pepper. (laughs) Pepper. (laughs) that's not okay there's so much out there i mean at least throw some butter on that thing at the very least okay so the worst made turkey and the worst made ham which would you rather eat the worst made ham i think really yeah i would say i mean both of them are having sauce put on them, right? The worst made turkey, you're slathering sure. it in turkey, no gravy or yeah. cranberry sauce. I personally am a cranberry sauce guy. I'd rather put that on my turkey. The gravy goes on the mashed potatoes and the stuffing. Okay. Ham, you're going probably mustard, unless it's like yeah. a sweeter one. Maybe, I mean, if you're lucky, you cooked with some pineapple rings. No, I said the worst cake ham. The worst ba- made, made ham. 
I'll just go get some pineapple from a can and just throw that on there then. Okay, but there is one, there's one dark horse here for number eight that we haven't talked about. Fruitcake. I like fruitcake. I don't. Now, what are we talking dark fruitcake or light fruitcake or just any fruitcakes you don't like? How high up is it on your list, Carl? Just be honest with me right now. Is this worth the, the debate? <laughs> Look, just because I referred to this as the queso of this conversation earlier <laughs> tells you all you need to know. I would probably put this, it's for sure top five on my list. Oh, all right. We're going to have to find a compromise there. I don't think it's going to be number eight. <laughs> You know, we can put, so what would you pick though? Ham or turkey? Worst turkey versus worst ham. Which one are you taking? Worst turkey. Really? Yeah, for sure. Poorly made ham kind of grosses me out. It's a weird, like slimy texture. I guess that's true. Very plain. When I was, when I was imagining worst turkey, it's dry. And like, you know how it like kind of flakes when it's dry? That's what I was imagining. So then I, I went to the other side and imagined dried out ham which you just toss some mustard on it and you're fine, right? Fine, quote unquote. But yeah. you're right. The, the sloppy, juicy, the undercooked ham. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you. Ham's Cold number ham? eight. Yeah. Ham's yeah. number eight. Turkey is coming in. I mean, turkey leftovers over ham leftovers for sure is better. Easily. Yeah. Turkey sandwiches. Yeah. We're set. Right, so are we putting turkey in at number seven then? Is that where I we're think, sitting? I think turkey's coming in at number seven. Okay, which is, I mean, which is interesting because they are the stars of the show in theory. That's because they take so darn long to make. Right. You need, people need to be better. Put in the time. Put some extra thought into it. Don't just be like, I'm just going to buy a spiral ham and make the sauce that's in the package. This is the main feature for your meal. Do it well. Yeah, act like you love the people you're serving it to. Yeah. Grandma. (laughs) I'm sorry, mom. I love you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that is in no way a reflection of the people who actually cook for me. My, I, I have <laughs> delightful Christmas dinners. Not that I'll be eating their Christmas dinner this year, but. Uh, yeah. If anything, this is a lesson for us this year, Carl. <laughs> it's true for me and you. Uh, Take care of the people you love, Nick. All right. So six four. fruitcake. I was going to say, you're not put, you're not letting fruitcake get into the top five. I guess it I has can't. to go in here. I can't. I can't. It just, like, look at it. Okay, we're not going to get into it. I don't want to. Okay, so here's our top five left. Sugar cookies, gingerbread, mashed potatoes, eggnog, nuts and bolts. All the desserts made it to the end. (laughs) The desserts. We've got (laughs) got one beverage. The only beverage on the list made it. We've got a bunch of desserts and one side. Our only side dish made it. Yeah, but that's because mashed potatoes are the best side you can you can make. Now, that being said, I think mashed potatoes are coming in hot at number five. Now, if you're making mashed potatoes really well, I'm going back for more. Here's the thing. A great mashed potato does not require gravy. Totally if agree. If you are making mashed potatoes and I don't need to put gravy on it, you have done a service to my palate. Now, are you a plain mashed potatoes fan or do you like them made with like garlic butter or with parsley added or you know what's your preference i'll I'll ta- definitely toss some herbs in there for sure mm-hmm. um i'm a big fan of using some extra you know some some of those things instead of just like butter or milk in there sour cream is a great thing to add into those mashed potatoes um and along the herb line i'll use like an herb borzen cheese Ooh, toss that in there nice. and that's going to give that nice creaminess to it beautiful i'm salivating what, what's your what's your mashed potato trick i i make garlic butter oh. and i make it with fresh cloves of garlic and i mix in some parsley in there and that's it we do that with a little bit of milk and salt nice so are you and roasted garlic i assume yeah so you roast yeah. your own garlic, toss it into, yeah. mix it with the butter. Nice. That's yeah. good. It's beautiful. Now, do you, what else does that go on? Is that kind of just a butter that you have around or? It's a butter that 
is frequently just in the fridge. Yeah. Okay. You throw it in mashed potatoes. When I make fresh loaves of bread, make a little bit of garlic bread with that. Oh yeah. yeah we put it on a lot. My go-to bread butter to, to make is just a little, a little honey butter. Toss some honey in with the butter, mix that around. That's a great one to toss on. Nice. Uh, so, I mean, especially if you're doing ham, if you're doing ham with dinner, have some, some dinner rolls there, put some of that on there, make a mid Christmas dinner ham sandwich. Just to break up the meal a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, Cause the first round, you just got everything there. The second round uh, you've used the, the bun partially to mop up the rest you also then use what's left of the bun. Yeah, you got to be conservative with your bread consumption mid meal though. I know you're not cuz you don't want to fill up on it. That's not no. the highlight. Yeah. Yeah, the bun is the bun is there for cleanup. That's what the bun is there for. We didn't include buns on our list. They're they're right after milk. <laughs> they're number 12. So 5 yeah. is mashed potatoes. 5 is mashed potatoes. I'm going to go here so Sugar cookies, gingerbread, eggnog, nuts and bolts. I'm going sugar cookies here. And most of the Go ahead. I just think of if I'm thinking of cookies, like cookies are not both like both of these cookies are not top three. And so I think one of them's gotta go now. And so, I would pick gingerbread over sugar. I agree. Here's what else I'll add to your sugar cookies um, reasoning. Sugar cookies are everywhere and they're all the same. They might be different shapes. There might be some different icings on them, but it's not like there's people mess around with the sugar cookie recipe and somebody makes this like unbelievable sugar cookie. They're mostly all kind of the same and they're kind of everywhere. Every, every Christmas celebration you go to, there's, there's sugar cookies. Well, and they're not just a sugar, like a Christmas thing. You will get sugar cookies at Valentine's Day. You'll get sugar cookies at Easter. You'll get St. Patrick's Day sugar cookies. You'll get Halloween sugar cookies. This is not a just Christmas thing. Now, they're great at Christmas. Sure, I'm going to eat that Christmas tree with those little decorations all day. Oh, and I'm going to eat like half a dozen of them in one sitting. Yeah. Until I mean, somebody a- comes around and says... Save some space for dinner. I'm going to keep eating some sugar cookies. Yes, but I'm going to eat some of these other things more. All right. So we got our nuts and bolts, our eggnog, and our gingerbread. Which one of these, if you could take, which one of these would it not feel like Christmas without? It wouldn't feel like Christmas for me without Wait, which would it not feel like Christmas? I'm putting gingerbread at number three, I think, if I understand your question correctly. I don't think you are, but that's okay. So gingerbread, so what you're saying is you you could under, like it could still feel Christmassy even if this thing wasn't there. Yes. Christmas could come and go and you haven't eaten a single gingerbread and you're fine with it. Yes. And I'll tell you why. I never made this connection until you brought up nuts and bolts. I, I never eat the homemade nuts and bowls unless it's Christmas. That's like a very specific thing that every year those show up at Christmas. Absolutely. That is a thing that I regrettably have been quite busy in December, have not had a chance to make them yet. This weekend, I'm going to make them. And what's great is it'll now last me through Christmas into January. And now I have January nuts and bolts, which are going to be a treat. That's going to be nice. Do you add some spice to your nuts and bolts? Yeah. I, I mean, like I've they're got, spicy, what, do I, right? what do I put? Uh, no, they're not spicy. Like I put some spices in there, but they're not like, they don't have like kick to it. Like, they're not hot. Okay. My grandma makes a mean nuts and bolts. That's hot. Ooh. I would say the biggest feature of the ones I make, uh, are, they're smoky. Oh, nice. Liquid, liquid smoke in there. It gets kind of that smoky flavor in there. Well, when we finish this conversation, Carl, you might need to share your recipe with me. Because I ain't got nobody making nuts and bowls for me this year. Well, there you go. You can have the recipe that I'll be making this weekend. We can just make them together. There you go. Be a nice little moment. Beautiful. So gingerbread's coming in at three. For me, yeah. Which brings us to number one. And I know that there are some people listening to us right now 
who are incredibly offended that eggnog has made it, even made it on this list, let alone is top two. I used to be one of those people. What changed? Uh, you know, similar to the chocolate orange situation, I tried it once years ago and I was like, Bleh, this is gross. And then as an adult, I was like, okay, grow up, try it again. And I did and I liked it. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It is something that I'm putting that at number one, mostly because it has been in my fridge every weekend, every week since the start of November. I have, that is the thing that I, the Christmassy item I have consumed the most of this year and year in year out is the one that I have the most of because you can have it standalone. My typical way, dump that into some coffee in the morning and it's not like an eggnog latte. Sure. Sure. I've had my share, fair share of Starbucks eggnog lattes this season, but that's what I've getting. I, t- I toss them in there, pour my coffee in a great flavor filled way. Get some of those Christmas flavors in there, some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and I'm ready. Wow. Okay. I was, I was not expecting you to be so passionate about eggnog. Do you want to hear another quick tip? Yes. You're, if you're feeling real lazy in the morning, Eggnog, self-rising flour. I think that's the only other ingredient. Mix those together a little bit. Toss it in the oven. You got yourself a little eggnog muffin in the morning. Wow. Two two ingredients. Takes you about 10 minutes. Put them in before you go to shower. You wake up or you get a, don't fall asleep (laughs) in the shower. Hop out of the shower. You've got muffins ready for you. What a day. What a day. Look at you go with the eggnog. You've convinced me. Throw eggnog at number one. All right. Well, I, that was easy. And your smile is just, I'm so filled with happiness right now. I'm going to go have a glass of eggnog. <laughs> I'm, I'm deeply regretting this cup of tea I have. Well, eggnog is coming, Carl. Do not fret. No. All right. Um, we have made our list. We do not have to check it twice because we know this is the definitive summer top 10 Christmas food list. Thank you for tuning in. You can find us. We'll be back next week. Next week, we're going to be prepared, previewing, not preparing, previewing the World Junior Hockey Championships unless they get canceled. Um, if they don't get canceled, we'll be pre- previewing those, looking at those. Got a special guest that we're going to be having on to help us with that next week. Again, unless that falls through. Who knows? It's 2020. Anything is possible. Anything can happen. We can promise things and we'll just pull the plug on them. There might not even be a show next week for all we know that'll happen. Don't yeah. It's, it's in the, it's in the calendar. Yeah. It's in there. And I don't work that day. It's Christmas vacation starting that day, Nick. So. Oh, nice. Well, then I'll have to tear you away from the video games. Yeah. I'll need a break. We might not have a show. <laughs> we might not. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be knee deep in Xbox at that point. In time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so let's, uh, if you need some more about the show, you can head on over to the fourth line podcast.com at fourth line podcast on Twitter mail at the fourth line podcast.com tell us what you would put as your number one christmas food especially i mean i know that we have our swedish listeners uh we've got our uk listeners we've got our american listeners their lists will be different than what we have here because then i mean your chocolate orange some of those places don't even have it so they'll be they'll be (laughs) they'll be shocked that this thing that doesn't even exist in their world somehow lost a, or beat out a candy cane. So head on over there. Let us know what you think. You can find more episodes at on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, the Full Press Radio app, wherever you listen to podcasts, we are there for you. We'll be back next week, as I mentioned. Same time, Monday night. See you then. It's time for us to wrap up another fourth night show. I know what you're thinking. You don't want us to go. It's time for me to fix my rhyme about DeBoer. Cause this time last year, the shark showed him the door. The door. 